Yes, I made this, I made a video like this ages ago. Yes, I know none of you care. And no, I don't care that you don't care. Because I'm bored, it's Saturday, and I'm not out with anyone. So, why not have fun? Hope you guys enjoy this. Hello, I'm Ruby, and today I'll be doing my top 10 list of the worst Doctor Who episodes. Now, this is my opinion, and if you are offended by my opinion, then you should not watch my video. If you are someone who actually does like opinions, and feels like they have an honest response, and opinions, and, you know, points about a certain subject that are quite wrong, and you can see it as the cracks show as you watch it and realize all of it, then you can stay here and watch the video. But if you do not like my opinion, then you can leave or leave a dislike if you want, but it's my opinion. And that's just a little one, and so... Number 10. See, this is a controversial video, so I can't really say much about people disagreeing with me, but the ending of season 4, The Stolen Planet, and The Stolen Planet Part 2 episode. Now, it's boring as hell. Think about it. At the start, you have Doctor, sorry, you have the Doctor and Donna. Uh, before this, we had Turn Left, a really good episode where the Doctor finds out that Donna met Rose, or Bad Wolf, however you want to put it. But at this point, the Doctor goes to the TARDIS, and then it's all bad wolf this and bad wolf that. They go to Earth, and then it's just like, Oh, Donna, look at this! Kenneth Vaughn! Can't believe you told me that you met Rose! And then as they leave, um, something's blocking the sun, and it's the Dalek ship. And then they are on with Sarah Jane, Jackie Tyler, Mickey Smith, um, Rose Tyler, Martha. Jones, Captain Jack, who else? Donna, Doctor, Double, Other Doctor, Doctor Donna, Davros, the da Dalek Supreme, Dalek, Come, Can, whatever that fucking crazy one was called, and it just gets boring after a while. Believe me, I fucking slept through this episode. I slept. It's so boring. It's like the Dark Knight, in my opinion. It's just boring in some bits. I'm not saying that you should have action all the time, but you should have scenes that are just interesting. And usually, I cut to the end where there's actually shit happening. But apart from all that, it's a mere part two ending. Donna gets her mind wiped by the Doctor. I think it's a pretty bullshit move. But you know, they got end of time and the next doctor and the dead planet and the Mars one. So I can't really complain. But it's a boring episode as freaking hell. Number nine. Now, I know a lot of you like David Tennant and he's an okay director for but Redlock is pretty boring. Okay, so we start off with the Doctor and Martha Landon and New York on planet sec the second planet San planet whatever whatever it's bloody called the 15th New York in the undergrounds and that's a really interesting plot. But and then Martha just gets kidnapped by these two lovers, and then that's the episode. Doctor tries to find her, going through all the pods and then 
fuck, like, stuck with this cat and one and then, and then he gets captured and then the doctor realises that the face of Bo is dying and that his cat bitch is there and from the hospital in second planet 2, whatever it was bloody called, the one with Rose and Cassandra and all that, and it was pretty boring. As I said for the last one, it was boring, the doctor just climbed through and climbed out of bloody cars. It was just so meh. It's a bit worse than the Stolen Earth because that was really a part two episode and plus was a little bit going on in this one. Martha just eats shit or piss quite literally. The doctor plays with some cats, face of bulls dying, people can't get out and then at the end they get out and then to be honest this is why it's number nine. At the end the doctor tells Martha about Gallifrey. The best bet about season three in my opinion. But apart from that, it's just a boring episode from season three. Number eight. Now Who remembers who remembers those bloody flashes? I do. So I'm putting um the rebel flash and the almost people as the number eight worst spot because it's crap. You got these bloody white looking cummy things and these orange jumpsuits and then you got Amy and Roy looking around just because they looking at me to find another way to because there's acid in the way and apparently the rain is acid and it's another bloody story where the doctor and gang are stuck and because they can't reach the TARDIS and they need to find a way and it's bloody boring because we have like the original and then we have like the gang I think or like the both gang I don't fucking know but whatever so we got the almost people and then the people that's what I'm gonna call them does not matter and the almost people try to kill the people and then the act one of them actually does and the doctor gets pissed and the doctor gets another one the doctor gets an I mean the doctor gets a guy and then they get confused and then and then Amy can't trust the almost doctor but then the doctor and the almost doctor get changed the fucking shoes and then Amy is trusted and then like Amy needs to I don't fucking know anymore. The Gainers, that's what it's called, the Gainers. And then at the end, we learn that Amy was actually um, milk and she evaporates because she was actually in a fucking lab for a baby. But, um, who cares? Who cares? Number seven. A good man goes to war. Now, A Good Man Goes to War is not a good episode. Now, you might be a bit surprised that I'm actually putting this after the Flesh Game. Because obviously the Flesh Game is just something to be used so then they can buy products and then they can, character options can make a new Doctor White Commie. But, A Good Man Goes to War is just boring. No, it's no. I said this for quite a while there, but the episodes. But you got not subtlety when we meet the two gay soldiers because they're just like were the gay fat soldiers, the headless monks, um, the blue fucking jab of the hot asshole, the doctor apparently dying at the end. Um, the Doctor keep a low. Um, what else? Oh, fucking else. This. Just... Now they got that Rever clone, or whatever that was. I don't even know. I think it was Rever. I don't. Rever's clone. I think I don't know. But it's just a forgettable episode, and Roy and his bloody 
Roman outfit. And Amy, Amy's okay. Matt Smith's okay. And then we go to Let's Kill Heather after this. And it's not the worst episode, but it's not the best either. So, yeah. Number six is to think. Episode starts off with the Doctor and Rose heading to 1959, but accidentally hit head to 1980, 1859 or seven, whatever. And then the, Dave, the Doctor has to do David Tennant's voice. Rose does a bet with the Doctor. Funny thing. And then there's a werewolf in the basement. And then the werewolf is a human that needs the moon to transform into a werewolf. And then there's, there's these ninja monks. And then Queen Victoria. Then it got scratched, but never dead. Uh, um, she has this powerful antlet. And then the fucking Queen Victoria the Second. No, it's Queen Elizabeth the Second is actually a fucking werewolf. Um, but this episode does have the first, no, yeah, first mention of Torchwood. So, I don't know, I don't really care. But, Rose Bet and, those monks are pretty shit. Like, I completely forgot about them. And then the wolf not smelling vegetables or some shit. Or well, they couldn't smell them because they had vegetables. And then the powerful antler killed the wolf, but not the human. And then the telescope. And then the fucking Scooby Doo gang finding the bloody books. Number five. Ah, uh, yes, I bet you were all wondering when this episode was going to come up. Love and Monster. And then put it at number 10, or oh, 10, number 1, because it's something worse. But I put it as number 5 because it's not a good episode and it's not a bad episode. <sighs> See, there's bits that I do like. Bet Owen John reference. Um. Hmm. What else? No, no. I regret my statement. It's no, no, it's not. No, no, it's not even good. It's not even good. It's not even good. You got Elton. You got Mona Myrtle. You got that Smeagol's one. Sneak, seagulls, whatever that fucking fucking rat. Not rat. One of his fucking. Bear, teddy bears and his children. No. And then you got a bitch missing, missing daughter 2600. And then you got John Denning's great black granddaughter Junior. I don't know. The episode's all about this one guy trying to find the doctor because his mum was killed. Or was killed. And the shadows killed her. And I think that was the fucking Vester order. And then the doctor was there, and then Elton had P PTSD after that. And anytime when he hears the TARDIS, he faints and then remembers Vietnam. Um, and then they make um, Bender the grip, and then William, William Fatstack, he's from Daleks. Um, Dalek, I mean. Um, and then the big fat guy shows up, and he's actually um, the Absorber Buff. Okay, so he's literally like a Sabine because he just he was a human there and then he wasn't. And he's also green, but instead of he's got faces on his ass and his he's got faces around him. I don't know anymore. It's so bloody stupid. Number four. Remember that episode with. The 
doctor and his companion with a big spider thing. It's not the runaway bride, it's the Lazarus experiment. Yeah. This is it's fucking terrible. Basically the whole entire episode is that the doctor finally lets Martha go after her Dalek. Um, Shakespeare and Gridlock Adventures for the because the deal was that Martha would get on the two trips in the TARDIS future and past because she helped the Doctor in the Jadun bet with, the, with Smith and Jones and um, the Doctor leaves her and the Doctor hears about the Lazarus experiment and he's just like bitch I'm gonna go get that um, I'm gonna go get that character options figure and I'm gonna put that on. And they do, and they go to the Lazarus experiment. Um, reasons why it's on this list. Um, it's too bloody long. The bet when the Doctor and, and Martha and her bloody sister kill the bloody Lazarus thing. You know, you think that's it. The Martha's mum slaps the Doctor in the face. Ha <laughs> ha You think that'll be it. But then Lazarus just escapes and he goes to a church. Um, because, um, if you know me, um, I'm actually banned from every church. Because, <laughs> um, but, um, what was I? Oh yeah, it's just born. And then the climax is just like, the doctor plays piano. Or whatever it's fucking called. Whatever it's fucking called, I mean. But, um, you know... Boring, I guess. It's too long. Could have been shortened down to like an emotional scene where Martha's just like to her mum, Mum, I'm old enough. You can just let me go now. But no, we just get a boring climax with us with Martha's sister, the Doctor Lazarus. And may I just add, the Lazarus experiment actually is mentioned at the end of season 3 by the master and basically the fucking machine helped the master to create his own sonic laser so he can de-age and re people Bleh. uh it's boring but number 3 Thin Ice season 10's Season 10's worst episode, in my opinion. Why? <sighs> like, I like it when the Doctor and Companion go back in time. Like, fires are Pompeii. The Shakespeare's cold. The Vector of the Daleks. I like that episode. But... This one did not go well. It's the second... No, third episode of season 10 with Belle and the Doctor. Um, they land in 18th century Lon yeah, London. Um, the water's all iced and there's a fish monster living in the ice. And then if you make too much noise or or if you like, I don't even, I forgot, but then there's like this rich guy making shit, um, um, kids being orphans, the doctor giving the house to the orphans, um, so forgetful, like, let's just remember the doctor falls, one of the Peter Cloudy's best episodes in the same season as Finn Ice. It's like the worst episode. I remember, right, here's a little story about me. I remember running to go see Finn Ice to my house because my mom was obviously ill, so I had to run. I ran home, opened the door, sat on my chair, and then Doctor Who came on. The worst afternoon of my fucking life. But, that's really much it. It's just a forgetful episode. Number two. It was hard to think of this one. Ranger Akita. 
This is the second story of Clive and the Doctor, well, the Impossible Girl and the Doctor, if you think about it. Where Clive the Doc and Clive and the Doctor go to the Reigns of Aki Ten, where um, it's not money you buy stuff with, it's personal stuff you buy stuff with. So, say, like, mom, I have a ring for my mom, I would pay that. And people, um, like this son that's actually a being, and this little girl shit, TARDIS doesn't like clever. The sets look nice, including, like, the stalls. Um, to be honest, I'm gonna say it again, it's just boring. I can't be asked to think about like, what the TARDIS thinks of Clara. And, um, most of season 7 is like this. That's, um, oh god, dinosaurs, dinosaurs on the spaceship. Um, we have Nightman Silver. That was really boring. I couldn't be asked, like, the Cybermen, oh, Cybermen, just awful. And then they got that guy from the Nativity. <laughs> Journey of the Center of the TARDIS wasn't that bad, the Crimson Horror was terrible, Hyde was a crap, boring, but Mains of Aki 10 is the worst episode of season 7. Or oh, Dinosaurs on the Spaceship, but that, that was it. And I thought I should add in some, um, dishonorable mentions, because, you know, why not, why not? Like, all of you would want to see dishonorable mentions. We have... Where's the episode? Sorry. Um, we have the Angels Take Manhattan, the worst episode to kill off two brethren companions, Amy and Rory. Dinosaurs on a spaceship. We got two funny robots that the people that were doing that were from Peeps, I think. It was really just boring, but Rory is dad and Rory, the relationship. Plus, with Matt Smith's brilliant acting, and also from like the first Doctor being the villain from like an old Saturian ship, whatever it's called, made it a bit better to watch. And those psychiatrists are just really bloody boring. A town called Mercy. The Doctor and Gain head to an old western where apparently there's this crazy guy, an outlaw called the Doctor as well, and um, there's a robot sheriff that just looks like. Like a really shit version of Robocop, and um, it's just too long. Uh, Nightman Silver, come on, the Cybermen just look like Cybermen look like Iron Man. Um, it's just boring. The Doctor fighting himself, that's like an okay bet. Um, that's really much it. Um, oh, um, what's the episode called? Game, uh, one seven. Um, school reunion. Um, and okay, it's, it's, I was, a, I wanted to put it onto the list, but, um, the bats were not a good villain, and, um, Sarah Jane was probably the best bit about it, but it, the, the episode's just trying to make you feel nostalgic, but you really don't feel nostalgic because you're probably five when you're watching it. Six, seven, or five when you're watching it, and you feel like it's supposed to be like nostalgic. It's supposed to be so nostalgic, but it really isn't. And number one, season 11. Couldn't pick an episode. Could not pick an episode. Cannot. It was. It was too hard. Too hard. No joke. I actually put thought and effort. I could not think, think of an episode of season eleven to go up. So I thought the best reasonable thing to do was to select the whole entire season because it was fucking boring. So, we, so the season starts off with the Doctor. Crash landing onto a train where we meet Ryan, Yaz, Grace, I think, and um, Graham. That's it. 
Graham. Um, what can I say? 13th Doctor just shows like 10, 11, and 12th Doctor. Um, she keeps using a bloody sock screwdriver too many times. The outfit looks meh. Um, Yaz is okay for a police officer. Ryan's meh. Bloody dad situation was a bit boring. And Green was the only likable character. Like, the only likable character. Until that bloody episode with Doc Brown in there, for God's sake. And don't get me started on the bloody celebrities. Now, if you know it quite well, you know that I like Lee Mack. He's pretty funny, in my opinion. And when I heard that Lee Mack was going to be in a Doctor episode, I thought, comedy hell. Guess how long Lee Mack was in it? Three minutes. Three minutes of screen time. They got a big list of liberty, and they gave them three minutes. It's like when we got Doc Brown to that blood, one bloody episode. He wasn't even used, he was the fucking brother of the pilot. Hi everyone again, thank you for watching this video and thank you for all your support. Please like and subscribe if you haven't, please put the notifications on and leave something in the comments for me and I'll try and